and the moonlit streets of Pine Bluff late at night. Stanisk scowled at Kedril and his wheelbarrow. Its squeaking wheel was going to ruin everything. How could it be so loud? It was probably not loud enough to attract attention, but it was all he could hear. The bumpy streets around the warehouse they'd turned into a barracks were all clear of pirates. In the distance, a cluster of torches could be seen ascending the mountain towards the Count's manor. The shouts of the militia also reverberated through the air, likely near the merchant's row. Both were pretty far away, and he had bigger plans. Having completed a loop around home base, they doubled back towards the dock. Sir, are you sure it's okay to leave the mage? I feel like he's our whole job, Roz asked with concern. Nah, this area is clear. He's well positioned. Right now he's got bigger fish to fry. They continued down the narrow street without torches or lamps. The moon was plenty bright to see by, and he didn't want to give away their position. Stealthy, other than that squeaking wheel. The wheelbarrow Roz was pushing was as silent as a shadow, but Kedril's was driving him crazy. Did we bring a lamp? I bet we can silence this axle with some lamp oil, the chief of security suggested. Er, uh, no. I think I got four torches. No lamps, though, sir, Kedril replied. I got none neither, Roz added. It'll be fine, I guess, Stanisk said, as he kept racking his mind for other ideas. They kept moving down the street and came across a dead pirate. Curious. Just one? What would kill just one pirate? I don't think the militia have been down here. Brave citizen or off-duty town watch? Kedril asked no one in particular. They got closer and the scene grew stranger yet. I don't reckon I know who would kill one pirate by pulling its limbs off and flinging them somewhere? Stannis asked. His tone was calm, but his eyes frantically looked for the answer. And also pulled out a few ribs? Roz pointed out. Stanisk's combined experience in battle and cooking told him that pulling apart a creature took a lot of strength, far more than he had. Pa, nothing to worry about. Steady on, lads, Stanisk said with a thick tongue. Grigory would get it. Best guy for night terrors and impossible deaths. They continued to the docks, alert and with renewed caution. The night air smelled of creosote, salt and dead fish. They came to the end of the street and the simple gate to the town dockyard. It slowly swung in the soft breeze. There were a pair of bodies just beyond the gate. Dangerous neighborhood, Yeowin said casually as he crouched to examine them. Two town watch, one bled out from sword cuts, the other took an arrow to the neck. A few of the men's hands subconsciously went to the male quaffs around their own necks. It's the duty of the town watch to secure the docks. These guys didn't have a chance. Stanisk looked over the defenseless port. The odd timber shipment didn't require much protection, but developing this harbour into a bastion seemed more important than it did yesterday. Nothing for it now. They were brave men, and we'll see them buried with honours. Later. Hold up here. Get your disguises on, Stanisk said softly. The pirate ship was moored on the only shipping dock, tied opposite to two fishing boats. The biggest fishing boats in Pine Bluff were dwarfed by the hulking warship. The frigate's deck was higher than the dock. Stanisk blinked his eyes, wishing to see something in the dark. But given the combination of its height and distance, there was nothing to learn. It was old, with signs of different generations of repairs and untreated spots of rot. If the other raiding parties were the same size as the one that hit their barracks, there might only be a few left aboard. At the same time, he knew that there might be a hundred fighters. Sighing deeply, he slid on an oversized hooded poncho. There were no lights anywhere on the dock or ship, but he could hear their laughter and the odd snippets of conversation from their ship. His men took advantage of the concealment of a small tree to put on the ragged cloaks and tied wide-brim fishing hats over their helmets. All right, lads, we keep silent and follow my lead. When the time for fighting starts, it'll be plenty clear. Yoin cocked his head to the side, likely looking concerned under his helmet.
Sir, do we even have to take the ship? They'll leave on their own, won't they? Eh, hey, yep. Then there's a ship recruiting new pirates, raiding our routes. This solves that problem, gains us whatever intel and goods are aboard, and most importantly, hey, free ship! Free ship? Yeah! was the hushed chorus from behind him. Glad that settles that, then. Leave the wheelbarrows here for now, and actually bring them. I got a better idea. The White Flame Industries' chief of security trailed off. The wheelbarrows were a last-minute improvisation to carry everything they needed and get to the docks as quickly as possible. A real mission would have had the men carry everything in packs, but time was of the essence. That noisy wheel meant they had to abandon them pretty far away to approach in stealth. But a new plan was starting to form, one with higher risk, but higher reward. New plan. Stash the supplies in a pile and load the wheelbarrows with shore stones. Cover it in a cloth. The men unpacked the bandages, ropes and water in a neat heap along a retaining wall near the start of the docks. Kedril, Jurgen and Eowyn, you's are injured now so limp. Roz, give em a hand walking. You's four are gonna get on the ship. Push past em if you gotta, for healing. They nodded sharply and even tied a crude sling around Jurgen's arm. The rest of you keep a hand on your dagger hilt. Wait for my signal. We's pirates now. Their procession started down the long shipping dock. Their straight formation and orderly pace was replaced by a shambling meander, two limping dramatically with their arms around a comrade to walk at all. The two wheelbarrows were in front, one of their wheels squeaking to wake the dead under a load of smooth shore stones covered with a ragged cloth. Every part of their glinting steel armour was covered by cloaks and rags. Stanisk's heart thundered in his chest. This might be a tale to brag about over beers for the rest of his life, or it could become the dumbest way a squad had ever marched to their doom. So many assumptions and so many risks. They made their way along the dock. It groaned under their weight. The squeak was now joined by a steady thunk-thunk as the wheels hit the small gaps between the planks. Stanisk strained to hear anything over the echoes of his own breathing in the closed helmet. The pirate gangplank reached the dock at a steep angle, its ends secured by ropes. "'Hoy! Back already?' came a voice from the dark ship. Stanisk took a second to steady himself. Yah, the mage was just where we was told. The rest are still looting. Boss told us to get the gold and jewels secured first, though. Two barrows full. We's rich. This conversation was shouted, and soon more and more heads appeared at the edge of the ship. For emphasis, the men carrying the wheelbarrows set them down hard, and the shore rocks clattered in a way that Stanisk didn't think sounded like jewels at all. I hope these idiots are idiots. We should have captured one and beat some intel out of him, even just the captain's name. Hold on, Tor and Gur got cut. Clear a path up. Let's get them seen to, Stanisk said, referencing the only two pirate names he could remember. Stanisk's four injured men pushed their way up the gangplank, even as a stream of pirates poured down it. Yeah, give me a hand here. It's too heavy to roll up the plank. We need buckets or sacks. Stanisk said, while standing in their way to the wheelbarrows. He impatiently watched them slowly make their way off the ship to stand with him and his men, who were standing a few paces back. Thankfully, their greed and excitement were doing a lot of the hard work. They shoved past him to get to their rewards. None of the pirates noticed their other returned crewmates' strange silence, nor their tense focus on the crewmate whose height and accent were a bit off. The chief of security took a slow breath in through his nose. No one else was coming down the plank, and they were all pressing in on the wheelbarrows. The crowd pressing around the treasure was big, but there still were no torches or lamps. Stanisk and his men backed up, circling the pirates as they clumped around the wheelbarrows. Hey, this isn't, the closest pirate started to say as he reached for the gold and jewels under the covering. Stanisk's dagger piercing his ribs from behind interrupted the rest of his sentence. 
A heartbeat later, more daggers were in more backs. The transition from pirates shoving each other to soldiers stabbing them was smooth and without comment. The pirates outnumbered Stanisk's men near three to one, but a skilled man can deliver fatal wounds to an unprotected back in shockingly little time. The entire ambush was over before the first pirate had fully collapsed. There were some startled cries of alarm, but the twenty-one pirates died on the docks without drawing a weapon. Darkness and violence worked against the pirates tonight, and Stanisk felt a grim satisfaction at balancing the scales in such a fitting way. There were some sounds of a scuffle on the deck, but soon Kedril whispered, Deck's clear, sir. Stanisk gestured to his men to follow as he went aboard the frigate. He looked over the scene. Three more dead pirates here, no one on the rigging, and only two stairways to below decks. Kedril, lead these four men down the forehatch, Ross and Ewan. Keep watch on deck, the rest follow me. Even with keen night sight, the first level was too dark to see. Even mostly blind, the hammocks and stink of unwashed men gave him clues about the nature of the room. Jürgen, strike a torch. I reckon we have the weight of numbers now. Aye, sir. The room flickered into an unsteady orange light. Amidst the scattered debris and abandoned clothes, no sign of pirates. Spreading out, he and his men meticulously examined each door and the fabric curtains concealing the ship's secrets. Nothing but silence. The sudden surge of adrenaline at a shadow moving in the darkness turned to relief as Kedril's team materialized from the fore, mistaken for a threat in the fleeting moment. He paused at the top of the single ladder, leading down into the lower bilge hold, listening intently. Enough time had passed that any remaining foes could have set up an ambush, assuming anyone was still down there. The prolonged silence, coupled with the lack of discipline he'd seen so far, suggested few remained. If any. The narrow ladder into a deep hold was far too defensive of a position to take lightly. It would take time to get some smoke pots and shields from their supplies. Even then the risks would be high. Stanisk grimaced at the thought of a dozen pirates down there, with crossbows and boarding pikes. Maybe a simpler solution will work. If there's anyone more on the ship, you can surrender now. I'll make sure you get a fair trial in town. He waited. The ship creaked. His men stood alert and still. He waited longer. He relaxed his posture when he heard hushed whispering from below him. We ain't pirates, please let us go, came a nervous voice from the hold. That's what a pirate'd say, but I'll get used to the magistrate and then you're his problem. The other way is, we stab you now. Okay, okay, we're coming up. One at a time they emerged from the bilge hold, hands open and empty. These ones did seem older and scrawnier than the other pirates, and their eyes seemed a bit more hollow, but Stanisk knew that wasn't a proper way to determine a man's fate. Tie em up and gag em. Search the boat. Bring me any bows you find. Aye, sir. As Stanisk returned to the deck, he watched his men hustle, their confident movements a testament to their training. Beneath his helmet, a bristly grin spread across his face, pride in his team as capable as any he'd led. The night enveloped them in its inky embrace, the dawn still a distant promise. Removing his helmet, Stanisk welcomed the cool sea air, allowing himself a brief respite to survey their surroundings. The town lay quiet, save for the alarming glow of a building consumed by fire, its orange flames piercing the darkness, a silent beacon of turmoil. Any sounds were swallowed by the distance. In this fleeting tranquility, Stanisk weighed their next moves. The ship was now under his control, unbeknownst to the enemy. This was the crux of the strategy, to lie in wait and spring the trap on the pirate squads upon their return, hopefully catching them off guard. With a tactical eye, he scanned the docks and the ship's deck to pick the best positions. Sir, three short bows and two crossbows, and plenty of shots for each. They had a mess of an armory, mostly empty tonight, Yowin reported with a shrug. 
Stanisk assigned five men to stay aboard the ship and use the bows, while he led four others with him back to the dock. Raise the gangplank, stay out of sight and watch for the trap to spring before you shoot anyone. Aye, sir. Loot these deaders and pitch him off the side. He helped them get the work done and led his half of the ambush onto the fishing boat closest to the frigate. Get comfy. This part might be a while. Now we wait for the raiding parties to come back. They took up positions on the back deck of the fishing boat, gently bobbing in the breeze. With just the moonlight, there wasn't much to see. Stanisk shut his eyes and took a slow, deep breath through his nose. The fishing boat stank of fish guts and salt. The tide must be high. The shore stink was all but gone. He could hear the rustle of the other men's mail as they made slight adjustments in the cool night. The fishing boat team would be the melee team, so he'd made sure to bring Kedril and Jurgen with him. They were still his two best fighters. After tonight, though, he had to admit that there were no bad fighters amongst his men. Even little Roz had acquitted himself well. Just a few more fights and they'll be done here. He hoped that his luck held, his reckless gambles had all paid off so far, but so much relied on surprise. Sir, what's the plan? What are we doing when they come? Kedril asked. With effort, Stanisk resisted sarcasm. We ambush them. These ambushes are starting to feel more like just murders, sir. Ha! Yeah, every bit of my plans centre around them not fighting back. Giving them a chance to win ain't good for us. It's just... I mean, anyone can stab people in the back. Especially in the dark, we train to win on open ground. Kedril's hoarse whisper rose louder than Stanisk liked. Keep your voice down. This is still an ambush. We'll save this talk for later, but this is what professionalism looks like. We get in and out without them ever knowing who it was, and the whole team comes home. You can say these were pitched battles with banners and trumpets when you tell the girlies about your heroism if you want. Kedril snorted, but let it drop. It's rare for a man to get old enough to grow a beard and still believe in valour and honour. Maybe he's the first guy I served with that had no awful experiences while soldiering. His sense of fairness would make him a shite officer. You need more cynicism and fear to lead men into battle if you want them to live. Kid's brave as hell, though. He's seen battle and wants more. That's pretty rare, too. Soon, their vigil was rewarded. Five pirates ran down the docks towards the ship. They were a ragged line, leaving a wounded member of their party behind as he awkwardly hobbled along. Light curse this whole wet village! There's something in the shadows! We gotta get gone! One of the pirates shouted as he ran up to the ship. Where the fuck is the gangplank? Let me aboard, it's gonna find us, we gotta go! Another added. The White Flame security squad remained still and silent, waiting to let them gather. Ho oh, there! Stanisk shouted, standing tall on the small deck of the fishing boat. At Stanisk's command, he and Jurgen unleashed the power of the polished copper sun tubes, prizes from the mage at the midsummer tourney. A burst of brilliant noonday light flooded the area, momentarily transforming night into day. The brigands, caught off guard, flinched and recoiled, momentarily blinded by the intense light. Perched on the pirate ship, the bowmen found themselves with an effortless task. The brigands, merely four paces away and vividly lit against the backdrop of darkness, presented perfect targets. Elevated and unhurried, the archers took careful aim. With a tone of grim finality, Stanisk commanded, Loose! In unison, arrows and bolts flew, striking true. Each brigand's back blossomed with a deadly projectile at the same instant. Agony and bewilderment were stark on their faces, illuminated by the magical daylight, as they collapsed. Heh! You didn't even get to stab anyone in the back that time, Kedril. Quickly now, loot them for anything they got and push him off the pier, Stanisk commanded, in a much more relaxed tone. He'd expected a lot more of them. They deactivated the sun tubes, plunging them back into darkness. 
The still-dying Corsairs were shoved off the dock into the inky black waters in a series of splashes, and the men returned to their ambush positions. Fine work, top-rate shots. I reckon there's at least one more raiding party, but they might have got killed by the militia. We's gonna wait a bit longer, then return to town, he said, loud enough for the men on the ship to hear. Sir, do you reckon they were running from whatever tore up that armless fella? Jorgen asked. The brawny lad's tone reminded the chief of a kid asking about monsters under his bed. Militar is plenty fierce, likely just that, Stanisk said dismissively. He hoped the mage would have some ideas. No point in riling up the men now. They didn't have to wait long. Soon, a line of bobbing torches came towards the dock. Much slower, maybe not even walking speed. It took a while for them to draw close enough that their voices could be heard, infuriatingly cheerful and excited. Worryingly, there was also some sobbing and pleading. Stanis tightened and relaxed his grip on his longsword. The familiar weight and heft soothed his nerves. This time it wouldn't be as easy. Shit, I bet we could have used ropes to rig up a tripline across these dark docks to prevent anyone escaping. We should have brought our own bows. A half a hundred other missed opportunities ran through his anxious mind. Years ago he learned that experience was just an aged regret. Too late for any of that now, he watched them approach. The torches cast confusing shadows, making details difficult. Eight torches, at least twenty pirates. They were pulling a few captives along, tough to say how many. Stanisk's eyes strained yet again, eager for any information to inform his tactics. Maybe Grigory could make me an enchanted spyglass. At the very least, I need to buy a few good spyglasses for the lads. See, they's taken some captives. Watch your swings and, more importantly, watch your feet. Hopefully they'll lay low when the fighting starts. His tone was steady and detached as he watched the approaching party. His men on the fishing boat repositioned themselves like coiled springs ready to launch. They'd covered themselves in rags to hide the gleam of their polished steel mail. Much closer now, he could see their faces. Confident and relaxed, several carried sacks filled with plunder. Two of them carried a heavy, ornate chest between them. Only one had obvious injuries, but didn't seem especially hurt. Almost all of them had fresh blood on their hands and faces, likely blood of townsfolk or militia. They kept approaching, not yet noticing the retracted gangplank to the ship. The height of their frigate meant that its deck was about eye-level from the pier and a pace or two distant. Not impossible for an athletic man to cross, but too far to do during a fight. Finally, they saw the problem. Hey, wake up, you lazy cowards! Run out the plank! It's us, we're back! One of the pirates shouted. He wore a wide hat and held a saber. Its curved steel blade glinted in the torchlight. Silence from the ship. Waves lapped and ropes gently creaked. The pirates gathered around the point on the dock where the gangplank used be. They left the weeping captives a bit behind them. Six women and two young men had their hands tied, and then in turn tied to each other. They still wore their nightclothes and showed signs of recent violence. Stanisk was glad there was a bit of space between them and the pirates now, even if it were only a few paces. They were a problem for later, though. Is this a joke? What the hell? Come on! We got plunder and captives! shouted the pirate with the wide-brimmed hat, more annoyed than anything. The blood from the earlier massacre was still sticky under their feet. Stanisk gulped. They might notice any instant, and this whole ambush would be blown. His glance flitted among the pirates, the ship, and the pier, hoping a better plan would present itself. Twenty-five pirates. Far more pirates than he was hoping for. None had bows, so at least he could force them to fight on his terms. Nothing for it but to make it happen. In a whisper barely louder than a breath, he commanded, Sit tight till the order. Oi! Look here, you limp, peckered, soggy bastards! He shouted as loud as he could. Amidst the ensuing chaos, the archers aboard the ship quickly adapted to the situation. 
even without the bright illumination of the sun tubes making the targets stark against the night, the density of men on the docks made each shot unerringly effective. In the heart of the confusion, Stanisk seized his moment. Vaulting from the small fishing boat onto the dock, he charged into the surprised invaders. With a powerful shove, he sent an unsuspecting pirate tumbling over the dock's edge. The man's head made a sickening crack against the frigate's hull before he disappeared into the dark waters below. The pirates, startled by the ferocity of the attack, dropped the heavy chest and sacks of loot in their haste to defend themselves. The dock, littered with their ill-gotten gains, became a battleground marked by Stanisk's audacious charge. For the most part they had their weapons sheathed, and the suddenness and ferocity of the assault bought the deadly veteran time to do his butcher's work. His longsword was an extension of his arm, an extension of his mind. He sliced open necks and pierced unarmored chests with precision and efficiency as arrows sank into oblivious backs. Stanisk grunted with pain as an axe caught him in the shoulder from behind. A quick flex of his fingers let him know the arm still worked, and with a mailed gauntlet he shoved another one off the pier. The pirates, still oblivious to the archers firing from their own ship, seemed momentarily stunned by the ambush. Stanisk seized his chance, falling back towards the pier's end. He was now cut off from the shore by the nineteen remaining alert and enraged pirates. You fucked now, big man! a pirate shouted, mistaking his position for an advantage. Lured by his seeming retreat, they surged forward, weapons drawn. Once they were fully committed past the fishing boat, he roared, Charge! No prisoners! His men erupted from ambush like a volley of siege engines, slamming into the pirates' backs. Despite his terror and the press of pirate blades, Stanisk grinned, Kedril is gonna have to stab even more backs. He's gonna hate that. They were now caught between the former master sergeant and his finest fighters, while the archers on the ship had a clear and unobstructed line of fire into the side of their ragged formation. He held a high guard position, parrying their attacks and slowly surrendering ground. When a pirate overextended or became distracted by another attack, Stanisk's sword flicked out with consistent, deadly results. The pirates were determined and vicious, several of their slashes getting through his defense, only his mail saving him from being gutted. The security squad pressed their advantage. Four abreast meant their formation was as wide as the dock, negating any advantage of numbers the pirates had. In a shockingly short time the battle was over, Stanisk's crew was once again victorious. Pirate blood soaked the old worn planks, dripping into the water. His shoulder throbbed. He leaned back with his hands on his hips to catch his breath. He blinked to get some of the sweat out of his eyes. His hand was numb and whole arm tingled. Normally he'd worry about that kind of damage, but he assumed it was something Grigory could sort out. Thankfully it wasn't his sword arm. Fine shots, lads. Thank you for not shooting me even once, he shouted up to his men aboard the frigate. Rolling his shoulder to test the range of movement, he told his men to sound off injuries. Again, nothing major. A few bruises and some numbness didn't detract from a victory. Looking at the butcher's bill, a flawless victory. He took off his helmet and strapped it to his belt to better look around at the mess on the docks and assess his prizes. My new ship probably has a name. He picked one of the dead pirate's torches off the gory docks. Holding it over his head, he could see the ship's nameplate. Despoiler of virtue, the only thing worse than pirates. Pirates that take themselves seriously. I'll come up with a more heroic name for our new ship. He paused to watch the men loot the dead pirates, admiring their speed in slitting the throats of the ones that weren't fully dead. Pitch em in the water too, sir, Jurgen asked standing to attention as he approached. Hmm, nah. I reckon we's done here, and some poor sap will have to fish him out later. Leave him. Stanisk wiped his long sword with a rag he kept on his belt for that exact purpose and sheathed it. Drawing his dagger, he approached the captives. 
Mercy, we're not with them. Please. Wait, are you Lord Stanisk, friend of the mage? Aye, that's me. You're all right now. I think that's the last of them's. What's your name? Give me your wrists. He effortlessly sliced the coarse hemp rope. I'm Kasri, my lord. We thought we were done for. We need to leave. There must be more on their ship. The young woman in a stained nightgown said. Her voice was quavering in terror, and he could feel her trembling as he cut her bonds. With the danger past, he was calm and relaxed. There was at most one more squad of pirates, and the militia was definitely fighting them earlier. He'd seen them fight, and he'd seen the pirates fight. There's no way they'd lose. Nah, we took the ship, Miss Cassery, he gestured to the faces looking over the gunnels. Send down the bilge hole captives, and we'll take them to the watch. You five are gonna have to hold the ship until I get someone from the town watch to secure it for us. Don't worry, young miss, we will pass right by the barracks, and I'm sure Grigory and his medic can check your wounds. He looked over the mess one more time, and took a long drink from his water skin. He splashed some of the warm water onto his face and rubbed his eyes. Form up, lads. Let's get a move on. Tonight went smooth on account no one expected to find a squad of heavy infantry hiding under every shrub. Don't reckon we'll have that kind of surprise again. So don't start thinking this is what battle's like. Soon, half the White Flame crew and two groups of captives were walking down the docks, back to the town centre. All said... Things had gone much better than he'd dare to hope. So much so, he even felt a bit bad about how he'd treated Kedril's concerns. I tell you what, Kedril, after we drop everyone off, we can go help the militia with any stragglers. I really think we should, sir, he replied. You can even challenge them to duels. I'll see if I got any spare armor to lend them. Stanisk teased as they walked through the silent, moonlit streets,